Mike Thornton here from Pretzels Expert, and I'm taking a slightly different look at the new Pro Limiter from Avid. Russ has taken a look at it from a music point of view, and I'm going to take a look at it from a post point of view. Now, what you've got here is we've got uh, what I've done here is to put the Pro Limiter in, but I've also put the new Gen VisLM immediately afterwards so that we can see how the two compare. So we'll lose the mix window now. And you can see that the figures are very, very similar. The integrated loudness, that's the overall figure that any program will get. So whether it's 30 seconds long or an hour long, that's the figure we're looking at. Uh, we've then got the short-term loudness. That's an integrated, that's averaged over the last few seconds. And again, we've got a short-term loudness here and the two figures are very, very similar. And what's happening here is we're getting a histogram. We're getting this yellow line here, which is the short-term loudness. And then this dotted line represents the integrated value. And then uh, we've got here the blue area, which is the loudness range. So it's giving me an indication of the dynamic range of the program. Let's take a closer look at the Avid Pro Limiter. I mean, the first thing that obviously strikes me here is it's a limiter and a loudness meter. Now, as far as the loudness meter is concerned, it's conforming to the EBU R128 loudness spec, which is the loudness spec which we've adopted over here in Europe. It seems slightly bizarre that an American company have used a European loudness standard, they haven't put in the loudness standard that applies to their own country, which is the ATSC A85 loudness spec. And there seems to be no way of adjusting it. It's permanently set to R128. So this is great for all of us in Europe, but slightly disappointing for American users because this is not measuring to the standard that you need to comply to to comply with the CALM Act in the US. So it is a loudness meter. It's great for us in Europe and it's measuring all the key parameters. It's measuring the integrated loudness, which is an average over the entire program. It's measuring the short-term loudness, which gives us an indication of how the dynamics of the program are changing. You can see that here in this yellow trace on the histogram. And it's also giving me a loudness range, a sense of the overall dynamic range of the program. So as well as giving me a numeric figure here for the loudness range, just called range here on the Avid meter, but also called loudness range on the new, new Gen 1, so it's giving me a loudness range. It's also telling me true peak, which is not surprising because I've basically set the true peak very nearly to the correct standard. So we need to have that there. So that's now set to the EBU standard for true peak. Of course, if I was still needing to deliver programs to the UK uh, PPM6, then I could run the threshold down to minus 10, which will now mean that I'm now peak limiting to minus 10 dBFS. But of course, that really makes a bit of a mockery of the loudness delivery spec, because once we get our final standards sorted out, then we will no longer be delivering to peak audio. We will be delivering to the integrated loudness figure. So I'll take that back up to minus 2, if I don't make it easier, and just dial it in. And so now what we've got here is a peak limiter, which is limiting to true peak. Again, most limiters until recently were limiting to a sample figure rather than a true peak figure. And so the true peak measures the peaks that could happen in between two samples. And they can be several dBs higher than the actual sample each side. And so that's really key to measure and to know what our true peaks are. And so that's set to there. And 
we've got our loudness range, we've got our integrated loudness, we've got a limiter, which as Rush has demonstrated very well, uh, has got a great uh, transparent sound to it, or if you desire, you can bring in some character. And then we've got this setting up here, the that's currently set to stereo pairs. Now this is determining how the channels are linked. At the moment it's set to stereo pairs, which makes complete sense because I'm just working in stereo. But if I was working in a 5.1 setup, so firstly we've got all with LFE. So that would mean if the signal on the LFE channel went above the threshold, it would dip the level of all the other channels. Next, we've got all without LFE. So again, that would mean that if the LFE went above the threshold, it wouldn't limit all the other channels. And then we've got front rear, which enables the front and the rear links to function separately. So the fronts are all linked together. That's left, center, and right. And then the surround, the left surround, right surround are linked together but they don't drag each other up and down. So if we get a peak on the front, the rear channels are not gain reduced. Whereas obviously if we used one of the all settings, if we had a peak say on the center, it would gain reduce all the other channels. And of course, as we well know from conventional stereo limiting, Linking is important if we don't want the image to suddenly dart around when one channel limits, which means that the image will move away from there. So that's really important, but that's what that little, this little section here is all about, all about channel linking. There's a little bit of confusion in the manual about exactly what these meters are showing because the manual refers to the fact that the pro limiter conforms to EBU R128 and to the ITU-U BS1770-3. Now, dash 3 was the latest revision, and that included the true peak spec into the loudness spec. But if we then move on down and look at the manual and look at what each of these meters are doing, it says that this meter here is a K-scale meter. Now, the K-scale metering system was a system that has been developed by Bob Kratz, but what it doesn't tell me is which one of the scales it's referring to, because Bob developed three different scales. So I can only assume that it's using the dynamics of the K-scale meters developed by Bob, but that does concern me slightly because it's my understanding of the loudness specs, but that's not necessarily the same ballistics that are in the EBU R128 spec. And also it seems a little bit doubled up because this yellow line here is tracking the short term. So why have a yellow line here and a blue meter, which effectively are saying the same thing? Or are they? Because again, reading the uh, manual, it makes no reference to the momentary loudness meter referring to the K meters or the short term, but it does say that the integrated meter is tied in with the K scale metering. And again, that doesn't quite add up for me in terms of my understanding of the way that the EBU loudness spec is written. But in terms of functionality, and certainly in terms of watching the two meters, I've spent quite a bit of time looking at these two meters functioning together and trying to establish whether they are telling me the same sorts of answers. And the answer is yes, they are. They are basically, to all intents and purposes, giving me the, exactly the same answers for the same program content. So I suspect a lot of these issues with regard to these meters are to do with the manual rather than the way the thing is functioning. I'd be interested to see Avid's response to those comments. But I do have to say I'm very, very surprised that Avid have applied the R128 spec. Although all these standards are very, very close, and the reality is that if you mix a program for R128, you can be pretty confident it's going to comply for the uh, A85 spec for the states, it isn't actually identical. And so it seems a little bit surprising that having integrated a loudness meter into this pro limiter, they haven't at least added the two key loudness standards, the ATSC A85 and the EBU R128 standards. 
but nevertheless certainly in everything I've done with it this limiter works really well it's a great addition to the Avid product range and an absolutely inspired idea to integrate a loudness meter into a pro limiter and especially a pro limiter that is also a true peak limiter so in the new broadcast workflows, this surely is going to become a key part of the workflow. And of course, it's AAX native and AAX DSP, hurrah. So that's another one to add to the pot. So I hope that's been helpful and uh, adds to Russ's review. And I'll see you again shortly.